Welcome back. The U.S. jobs report is now less than 20 minutes away. It's a report for January. It's expected to show the pace of hiring in the U.S. economy slowed down versus December. And wage growth numbers will also be issued this morning. For more on the non-farm payrolls report, we're joined by our featured guest of the morning. He's Colin Szczynski, chief market strategist at SIA Wealth Management. Colin, always great to have you on our show. Uh, I'll just, uh, before we begin our conversation, I'll tell viewers what to expect when those numbers are released. They're now 17 minutes away. The uh, uh, expectation uh, compiled by Bloomberg, which surveyed many economists on what they're expecting, is for an increase of 188 thousand jobs to have been added to the U.S. economy in January. That would be a, a smaller number than the 223,000 that were added in December. Um, there's, there will also be, of course, wage growth numbers if issued. Average hourly earnings expected to have risen in January from December by 0.3 percent. Uh, average hourly earnings measured from January of 2021 to January of, uh, ja I'm sorry, January of 2022 to January of 2023 expected to have risen by 4.3 percent. That would also be a deceleration from the December annualized pace of uh, wage growth. So I've said enough, Colin. What will you be looking at in these numbers when they're released? Uh, thanks very much, Paul. To me, the most important number I'm actually watching for is the average hourly earnings number. That's the, the wage inflation. That's the component of inflation is what I call sticky. Once once wages start going up, it's harder for them to to level off or, or bring back down. The It's not like commodity prices, which are priced every day and go up and down. And they're all over the place. And, and so to me, the wage infl inflation number is important because it has implications for the central banks in terms of what it, how much pressure is on the central banks to continue raising Raising rates. We know the Bank of Canada has paused raising rates. The U.S. is slowing the pace of rate hikes, and uh, and the um, the Bank of England and, and the Europeans were, are still continuing to to play catch up. So, but what's important to me, the two measures really I'm looking for. So one is wage inflation and the other is the, the core PCE inflation, which is the me measure the Fed uses. That of course came out a week or two ago and it was continuing to come down softer than expected. And lo and behold, when we saw a Fed Chair Powell do his press conference the other day. He actually made some comments that were less hawkish than expected. So uh, we, we are seeing that in, that inflation does have an impact on, on how the central banks react going forward. How how do you think markets will react if we get a, the wage growth numbers that uh, that uh, are, are expected, a 4.3%? A and, and what would that look to the, uh, the Fed, a, a deceleration in the annual pace of wage growth? I think a deceleration would generally be supportive for markets, maybe not immediately, but continually supportive over the uh, over the longer term. We've already seen the markets react quite a bit to central bank news already this week, both in terms of inflation and the impact, potential impact on the economy as well. What is your uh, read on the Fed and how far it goes uh, with rate hikes and when it hits the pause button, as has as has the Bank of Canada? Well, my feeling on the Fed longer term has been, and I've done some research into this, which showed that for every every hiking cycle for the last 50 years did not end until Fed funds was above the consumer price and the CPI uh, growth over year, including in 2019. It was just a tiny little bit higher, but it did actually go above before things uh, started to turn back down. So my feeling has always been for the last year, the question has been, where did the numbers meet in the middle? A year ago, we were at, at like half a percent Fed funds and 9% and in inflation and and we've come down and these have narrowed so that it, it seems to me that they'll they'll probably end up meeting in the middle somewhere in the low fives but if we're we're yet to, it's still to be determined but that kind of looks like where we're heading which would probably be about halfway from where both of them started okay let's go to the market now uh, the markets as most investors know have done pretty well during the early portion now a month plus a month and a couple of days of 2023 the uh, S&P 500 in the US up almost 9% over that period of time. What's going on? Uh, it's been quite an impressive rally this year from a, a number of uh, levels, but most importantly, stocks have been climbing a wall of worry, and and stocks have been breaking out of some pretty significant bases. There's what we call a head and shoulders bottom with the, the low in October and the higher low we saw when, in tax last selling season in December. Since then, we've seen markets starting to turn back up, and it's not just stocks, but sector ETFs and, and individual stocks as well have been showing some really good turnarounds in terms of uh, in terms 
terms of strength, in, in terms of, uh, of indicators, and, and in terms of breadth with the... Uh, it's been uh, it's been a broad based rally. It's not just a few stocks doing this turnaround. It's not just the most depressed stocks bouncing back. But we've seen uh, a lot of strength across sectors, a lot of strength across the, the level of market caps as well. We've seen we and and geographic diversification as well. So we've seen markets rally in North America and Europe and Asia Pacific. We've seen a broad variety of sectors coming back. We've seen even some of the markets we call risk markets coming back, things like emerging markets and cryptocurrencies and things where people would historically would go when they're a little bit more enthusiastic or at least encouraged about the market. Small caps have been picking up as well. So it's been quite a broad based recovery we've seen in the market so far. And, and the one I watch for today that'll be interesting and we've seen a lot over the, the course of this year has been markets starting out down in the morning and finishing up in the afternoon. And that's a sign of underlying accumulation and strength. We've seen that uh, even a couple of days earlier this week. So we'll see with uh, index futures down right now, where do we actually end up?